Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video I am going to cover the formation change that Liverpool have done and how this affects the transfer window coming up. I could be wrong, I don't, you know, I'm not a professional in this, it's just my interpretation of what I've seen over the past few games. So yeah, let me know your thoughts down below when it's uh, when it's finished. So here we go. This is how Liverpool have traditionally lined up. Take the players out, change them out, whatever, but that's the formation that Liverpool you generally play, you know, we've got We'd have Gakpo here dropping into the middle, allowing Jota, Salah, you know, could change him for Firmino, Mane, whatever, do you know what I mean? And then you'd have the eights coming backwards and forwards to help out with recovering. You know, Trent bombing along here, Robbo bombing up here, and Fabinho just kind of shuttling across here, covering up and, you know, playing a bit more of a covering role, yeah? Now, over the past few games, we've seen Liverpool start doing something that looks a little bit more like this. Now, I haven't named anybody because... I'm going to show you where the transfers come in here, right? But this is Trent now in his new position. Kanate is here. Van Dijk, Robbo, and then... Oh, he's done that again here. Hold on a minute, guys, while I get rid of these arrows. Uh, Fabinho, Jones, Hendo, Gakpo, Salah, and Jota. Now, the buzzword going about this now at the moment, you might have seen around, is the box midfield, which is this here. As you can see, it looks a little bit like a box. Now, Trent is now here instead of right back and he's pinging balls around and he can also get down here to overlap. He can, And then when we lose the ball, you know, he can drop back in here, allowing Kanate to shuttle back across. So it turns back into a bit of a four. And then this midfielder here, normally Henderson, would drop back to also help out in support with Fabinho. So there's still five defending it. But then, you know, like yesterday, we also saw Jones coming back Gapo coming back and so on and so forth, yeah? Now, what I think this shows that we need for Liverpool's transfer window coming up is a pacey centre-back to come in. Because, I don't know about you, but last night, when Matic playing in Kanate's position here, we saw West Ham expose this side of the pitch a lot more than they usually did. Now, the thing that pissed me off a little bit about last night is that Trent was getting a lot of the blame for it. Now, he's not playing right back anymore, guys. He's playing more of a central midfielder role. Now, so, yeah, he is meant to, like, come back here. But at the same time, he's played two games with Kanate, who had the pace to be able to come across and drop back in and so on and so forth. But there was, like, a, po a point in the game in the first half yesterday where um, West Ham are attacking down here. Robbo comes across, Van Dyke comes across, and I think Matip was like here or something, and the West Ham player was here, just like around about here. Do you know what I mean? And he didn't have the pace to get back to stop the shot. So for me, Matip, if, we, if Matip stays, he can play here alongside, you know, in the Van Dyke role if Van Dyke gets injured. But we need someone to come in who can take over this position or this position. Now, we have been linked with Vardiol and Ndika, who both kind of play more of the central centre-back role on the left here, but also left-back. Now, that to me says that Shimikas could potentially be gone because I can't see him playing this position. However, we've seen Robbo play this position for Scotland a lot, especially when Turn is at left-back. So he has the experience of doing this and he has the pace and, as well, Another good thing about this is Robbo would still be allowed to go bombing forward like he did yesterday because the left central six would drop back in to help cover. And if needs be, the eight could come as well, allowing Robbo to come down here and whip a ball in, yeah? I hope, that make, I hope I'm making sense, guys. I really do. I'm not a tactical genius or anything. But yeah, I'm trying to just try and explain how I see the, the transfer window going. Now... If we sign someone to come over here and sell Simicast, then that to me says that Joe Gomez and Kanate are going to take over this role, yeah? So, realistically, you want three pace centre-backs to, to, to play this formation. We can get away with one, potentially. I think Van Dijk has lost like a yard of pace lately. Um, but as long as we've got one here and one here, we should be fine. Moving into the midfield. The two sixes are a little bit different in the roles that they do. So, Trent has become more of a Kevin De Bruyne, who he'll put balls in here, he'll put balls in here, he puts balls over here. You know, he can come on here on an overlap or whatever. He can get into this bit here. He's more of a keeping the ball moving type player, you know. 
Whereas Fabinho, he's the destroyer. So he has to come in and like tackle here, tackle here, stop the ball coming across here, cover this other six and so on and so forth, yeah? Now, we have players that can play these positions now. So for me, in my opinion, Trent and Thiago are the best ones for this position here. We could play Thiago here. However, I don't think we could play Thiago and Trent together just because Thiago likes to run with the ball. He likes to potentially get himself into a little bit of danger. You know, he is an enforcer. Like, he'd put so many tackles in, and it surprises me how many tackles he actually does put in on a game. But I just think Trent and Thiago together could be a little bit dangerous if we play this formation. So I'd say here we have Trent and Thiago. Here we have Fabinho at the minute. Um, so we have seen us linked with Taram. At Nice. Now I can see him taking up this position here. Um, he is a bit more of a destroyer. He can tackle, he can win the ball, he can also run with the ball as well. Maybe that's where Gravenberch comes in as well, you know, someone to come in and take over this position here. I don't think we need anybody for this this other role. As I've just said, we'd have Trent and Thiago if Thiago stays around, depending on his contract situation, which I've spoke about a few times now. Now if we move on to these eights, we've been linked with Mount, Gallagher. McAllister, which seems to be getting some traction now and seems to be some serious talks going on there with McAllister. These can play these roles. And now, the thing about these eights is they look very, very forward. So when we've got the ball, it turns into a five here. Do you see what I mean? We've probably Trent pushing up a little bit further and then Fabinho slotting in here to help cover, yeah? But when we're out of possession, these two eights need to have the pace to get back and all. So, say we're out of position, you probably see Robbo come back over this way with Van Dijk, Canate, Trent had come back into the right-back position, and then these eights will drop in as well. So it turns into like a six. Do you know what I mean? Like that, with Fabinho covering here where the ball is, or he'd come over here wherever the ball is, or something like that. Do you know what I mean? And then the eights would just mop up wherever Fabinho wasn't, yeah? You know, we did see the odd occasion last night where Gakpo got involved as well and kind of like left Jota and Salah here to counter on with the pace, yeah? Obviously, this role could be Diaz, Nunes, whatever. Like, we haven't really got somebody to play here. But you, you get what I'm trying, trying, kind of trying to say here, guys, yeah? So these two eights need to have the pace and the energy to be able to do that. So McAllister is a player that certainly can do that. He's got a lot of energy. I could see Mount doing it. He's got a lot of energy. You know, it's a very genie Van Alden type of player for me. I think these two roles now. Van Alden would excel in this formation if we had him. So yeah, you're probably looking at like Mount, Gallagher, Bellingham, you know, he could come into this role here. You know, and I say like with McAllister and the talks that we've got with him going on, he is currently playing in a double pivot here. Now, this seems to be, this formation, with two double pivots close together, is very Brighton-esque now, what they're doing with Casado and McAllister. So, if we sign McAllister, he might cost a fair bit of money, but he could cover the eight position, he could cover the six. Very versatile, very Jurgen Klopp, do you get what I'm trying to say? Um, you know, Mason Mount as well, like, he could cover these eights, but then he could probably go further forward as well, you know, and take one of the front three positions. Very versatile players with a lot of energy you know and just to say one more thing as well like I know we've um, that's basically how the formations with the players that we've been linked to and where I see them going you know like um, I can't really touch it much else on that but I just feel like I'd touch on the whole Nunes situation as well with this because thinking about it, I've been calling for Nunes to play more here yeah but it's been Gakpo and Nunes has been playing here but if you watch Gakpo play and where Gakpo got his goal last night, he seems to drop in a little bit more here, like Firmino used to do, leaving this space open here for Nunes, Salah, whoever, to like cut inside, yeah? Now, maybe that's why we're seeing um, Gakpo play through the centre and Nunes on the left, because Gakpo is going to come in to help link up. We'll see these eights go out wide here, allowing Salah and Nunes to come into the centre, and it'll look a little bit like that. Do you know what I mean? So maybe that's what it is here with why Nunes is not playing more centrally. But in Jurgen Klopp's press conference as well after the game, he did say that we've got a new formation going on now and Nunes needs to adapt to it. But he's a long-term target. So a long-term target. A long-term... Um, what's the word now? A long-term plan with Nunes. So 
we'll see a bit more of him next season, which I hope we really do. But anyway, guys, that's how I kind of see Liverpool's formation going forward with how we've been playing lately. It's where I can see the targets coming in, you know, like your Mounts, your Gallagher's, McAllister's playing and everything like that. And then also just keep an eye out for a centre-back as well and let's just see how pacey they actually are. You know, because I I'd, I'd think that unless, like I said last night, the whole Matip situation just showed how you need someone with pace to cover either side of Van Dijk, otherwise you're just going to get ripped apart and like opened up pretty quickly. So anyway, guys, that's that for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope I've made a bit of sense. Let me know down below what you think on all this. If you are new to the channel, subscribe to it to keep up to date with everything else I've got going on. And I'll catch you in the next one.